everyone, Haley here from The Foiled Plan. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about troubleshooting techniques when you're experiencing issues with foiling. I want you guys to have the best results when you're foiling and I don't want you to let it defeat you when it's not working the way that you had hoped. So let's get you guys foiling your little hearts out. <laughs> Now my most recent video that I just posted was about frequently asked questions when talking about foiling. So go ahead and check that one out. And then if you are interested in a beginner's guide to getting started in foiling, I will link that also in the description box below. You'll see my craft room before I had this purple makeover. You'll see it looked quite different. <laughs> let's get into the troubleshooting techniques. Oh, but first let me mention my website launched on October 1st. So please, please, please check it out and let me know what you guys think. I just wanted it to be a place where you guys can come and learn and shop if you're interested in things, find designs, all that fun stuff. So check out www.thefoiledplan.com. Okay, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go over 15 steps today for the best foiling results. So when we're going through these things, each one is a different variable that we're changing. So whether it be how hot something is, how we're printing it, the machine that we're using. So change one thing at a time and then that will help us to figure out what the actual issue is that's causing your problems. So tip number one, make sure you are using a design that's optimized for the print size you are using. So if you are, let's say, working in Procreate, which most of us are using Procreate on our iPads, if you are using that and you have your design set to a five by seven inch print, but you plan to actually print it as a eight by 10 inch print, when you go to print it on a larger size, as the design blows up, the dimensions are slightly different and you are going to end up with fuzzy like blown out lines around the edge of your design. So if you are printing an 8x10 image, make sure you have your canvas size or your design size set up to print that size. I hope that makes sense. Make sure your size is optimized for the size you're printing. All right, tip number two is to try a higher heat setting. So if you're using a regular laminator that doesn't have any control over the heat. You have one temperature and that's it. You obviously won't be able to adjust this, but that is usually a good indicator of why you're not getting the best coverage. So a lot of people get spotty or pitted results and it's usually because the toner is not heating up enough to fuse with the foil. So if your machine will allow it, up your heat setting and see what your coverage is like after that. Typically when I am doing prints, I am using the heat setting number four on my mink machine and that seems to work perfectly. If I'm using a thicker paper, then I will up my heat setting to five. If I'm using a thinner paper, then I will go down to a three. You just kind of have to play around with your heat settings. That usually will give you better coverage. All right, tip number four. Three. If you are finding that as your design goes through your machine, that it comes out and it's kind of wavy and sort of warped, to me, that's an indicator that your heat setting is too high. So it's actually warping the paper. So try using a lower heat setting or if you still want to use the same heat setting, try throwing a piece of copy paper underneath your paper or on top of your foil before you pass it through the machine. It will just sort of protect it a little bit better and that should get rid of that wavy warping. All right, tip number four, let's talk about transfer folders. So I used to use a transfer folder religiously. I would never put anything through my mink machine without using one. I was too afraid that the foil was gonna come off or get like tangled up and jam inside that and then start a fire. So now with my mink machine, sometimes I use a folder and sometimes I don't. I've never had any issues. Now, if I am using a design that has a lot of different uh, foil sections where I have to cut smaller pieces every time I will for sure use a transfer folder just because when you have smaller pieces, it's a lot easier for them to 
fall off or just be crooked, situations like that. So if I'm using one design that's all foiled and I can use like one specific sheet of foil, I sometimes won't use a transfer folder and that usually gives me great results. If you have not been using a transfer folder and you're finding that your design, the foil sitting on top as it goes through, it ends up with wrinkles in it, then try to use a transfer folder and just up your heat setting. I usually find that it's very hit or miss when you're not using a transfer folder as far as wrinkles go the transfer folder just kind of helps keep everything smooth and flattened and you can usually tell that it's going to be a good foil application as it's coming out the other side when it almost looks like it's completely fused with the paper like it's suction cupped itself to the paper if you've been following a while you'll know exactly what i'm talking about when it's like so stuck down to the paper yeah, okay, I'll move on. So, okay, tip number five, we're still talking about transfer folders. A good thing that you can do is get a new folder. The reason that I got a new folder initially was because I ended up with spots of toner on my folder. I'm so sorry that I talk with my hand so much. Somebody is gonna call me out on it, I know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> But yes, you can try using a brand new transfer folder. I actually bought my mink machine used and the folder that came with it actually had toner spots on it already. And I was just like, oh, this is fine. I'll just continue using it and I'll just use like a different section of the folder. But once I got new folders, I could not believe the difference that my foil had when I was applying it. It was just insane. And I was like, why did I not do this sooner? So try a new transfer folder. Also a little tip, a little side note, if you do get toner on your transfer folder, you can use rubbing alcohol to get that off of your folder. So try that and then you can still continue to use your folder. Another reason that you want to get a new transfer folder if you can't get your toner off there is because you'll end up with ghosting. So what happens is if you have toner that's on your transfer folder and then you have a new design that you run through your machine with your folder, that toner that's on the transfer folder is gonna heat back up, it's gonna stick to your new design, and then the folder is also going to stick where that toner was. I hope that makes sense. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let's move on. So we're done with transfer folders. Let's move on to tip number six. Tip number six is to try a smoother paper. Now I mentioned it before in my previous video, but I typically use this Recollections brand 65 pound cardstock, or I use the 110 pound cardstock that is in bright white from Staples. It's the Staples brand. I just find that the white in that is slightly brighter than the white that comes in the Recollections cardstock packs. So that's what I use. I've had some people say to me before, you know, I'm using the same paper as you. I'm still having issues. I'm going to assume that the issue is probably not to do with the paper. It's something else because like I said, I've been using this from day one and I've never had issues with this. Something else that you can try to get the best results is to run your design through your mink machine or your laminator twice. Now, the reason that this can help is if you didn't get full heat coverage across the whole print, when you run it through the machine again, it should heat back up and any spots where there was no toner stuck down, it should hopefully stick the foil back down or fuse, I guess you would say, the foil to the toner in any spots that it missed the first time. Now, if you are doing that, you want to make sure that you're not peeling the foil back in between. The reason being, if you peel the foil off and let's say there was a big chunk that didn't have foil fused with the toner and you get a whole new piece of foil and lay it down on your design, when you pass it through, any spots that got foil on the first time, they're gonna end up looking dull and not that like reflective foil mirror-like effect that it would have when it passed through the first time. So if you are going to pass it through more than once, do not touch the foil, pass it through once and then pass it through again. All right, so tip number 
eight. When the design comes through your mink machine or your laminator, what you can do is set it down. If you're in a transfer folder, you can use your hand and smooth down the foil on top. Just push it down or you can use something like a brayer to roll it. I use this for so many things. If you are not using a transfer folder, what you can do is lay a piece of copy paper on top and then either use your hands or a brayer on top of that just to really push it down. Now you wanna do this immediately after it comes out of the mink machine or the laminator because it's still going to be warm. If you wait a little bit and it's cooled right off, that technique or that little tip will not help at all because it's already back to normal temperature. Tip number nine, quick and easy, wait to peel your foil. I don't normally do this, but if I'm noticing that I'm having spotty results, sometimes I will just set my foil print aside, move on to my next task, and then come back to it in a few minutes once I know it's completely cooled down. Tip number 10, check your printer settings. So a lot of people will print from their computer and you can change your print settings on your computer. And then what they forget to do is change your print settings on your actual printer. So I go into my printer and I go into the settings on the screen and I manually adjust the type of paper weight and paper size that I am using. So if you are using a thick cardstock, but you have it set on printer paper, which is just like super thin paper, a lot of times you'll end up with toner specs all over your page. So make sure your printer understands the type of paper and design that you're using. Another thing in your printer settings that you want to be aware of is that you have it set to print on the highest quality. So a lot of times it just has it on uh, best quality and you, no, what is it? I think there's like good, better, best, I'm not sure, but it usually is set on like the, the middle of the, the scale of how good it's gonna print. I'm very good at forming sentences, um, but I always make sure I up it to be on the highest quality. So keep that in mind. All right, tip number 11, we're still talking about our printer, but we're gonna talk specifically about our toner. So if you don't print that often and your toner cartridge is just sitting in your printer, something that you can do is actually open up your printer, take your toner out and you're gonna do this from side to side and you'll hear the powder inside which is the toner and it's just going to move it around a little bit and then you can put it back in. I mean you don't have to like maraca the thing but just a light back and forth and then put it back into your machine and then it should be okay. Now also while, while we're on the same topic, if your toner cartridge is super old, you might wanna think about replacing it. And when you do replace it, I strongly recommend that you use the toner brand that is for your specific machine. At one point I was using remanufactured toner cartridges because they were like a third of the price of a HP brand toner. And I was having really, really horrible results because they were so finicky so sometimes I would end up with like streaks and lines and stuff and then as soon as I replaced my toner cartridge with a HP brand the one that's supposed to be for my machine everything was perfect normally I am all about saving money and trying to get the best deal possible but stick with the the good toner also too i rarely have to change a cartridge in my laser printer in under a year like they will last me a year no problem which is not that big of a deal when you think of how many prints i actually do all right so that was tip 11 all about your toner. <sighs> Tip number 12. If you are just not getting the results that you want and you've tried all of these things, try printing somewhere else. If I actually have a larger print that I need to do, my laser printer will not do that size. So I have to go and have them printed at Staples. I just have them printed on a monochromatic laser printer and then I come home and I immediately foil it. 
So try that, see what your results are like, and that should help you rule out whether or not it's a print issue, a foil issue, a machine issue, that will help you. Tip number 13, try a different foil. There is lots of different options out there. I typically have used the Heidi Swap, the ThermoWeb Deco foil, and then another one that I buy in bulk from a Canadian supplier. So try different foils. There's lots of different options out there. Tip number 14, try a different machine. If you are using a laminator and you're just not getting the results that you want and it doesn't have the option to adjust your heat, maybe you try a laminator that does have the option to adjust the heat or go with a mink machine and see how the issues are after you change your machine. My last step for troubleshooting with foiling is number 15, take a break and come back to it later. I know this process can be quite frustrating at times and I really, really don't wanna see anyone give up on foiling because it is so awesome once you get the hang of it and it's such a beautiful little addition to any sort of paper crafting. So don't let it defeat you. Don't get frustrated. Well, let's be honest, you're gonna get frustrated, but just don't let it defeat you. It's okay to get upset about it, but just don't let it defeat you. You can do it. <laughs> I'm like that Shia LaBeouf thing. <laughs> you can do it. I think that's what he said, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. But anyways, yes, tip number 15, take a break and come back to it later. Sometimes you just need to go away from your crafts for a little bit and you don't ever want your crafting to be a chore or stressful. It's supposed to be a stress reliever. Don't let it get to you. So those are my 15 tips and tricks for troubleshooting and getting the best results with foiling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you have any other tips or tricks that you can share with everyone, please drop them in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about any of my tips and tricks that I've shared with you guys today, please let me know as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you guys found this helpful and uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Bye! I really need to start moving this closer so that I can touch it a little bit easier. Bye!